Good day everybody and welcome to another PHP Runner tutorial. I have received many questions regarding calculations within the query section of a project after the release of the tutorial entitled Introduction to Calculated Fields. This tutorial will focus on best practices when it comes to SQL query and hopefully clear up a lot of uncertainty. Thank you very much Xline Soft for this outstanding product. Visit their website to obtain your copy if you have not done so already. The first thing I'm going to talk about is choosing the correct data types. Choosing correct data types for your data is vital for building robust web applications. While some suggestions may sound obvious for seasoned developers, following these rules may save beginners hours of debugging time. Use date fields to store date values. Store numeric data in numeric fields. Some functionality like the search for specific dates or sorting will not work correctly if you store dates or numeric data in text fields. There are two data types to use with K. The first is fixed length character types like char or nchar in SQL Server. Use this data type only for fixed length data like two characters US state or five digits US zip code. What happens when you, for instance, store password in a char field? If your password is shorter than the field length, it will be padded with spaces to fill the whole field. Your login page will not work as the password entered by the user won't match the one stored in the database. The second data type to look out for is long text fields like text in SQL Server or MySQL. Because text values can be extremely long, you might encounter some constraints in using them. For instance, you won't be able to sort your data by a column with data type text. In MySQL sorting will be limited by the first number of characters, which are defined in max sort length bytes while SQL Server will throw an error. SQL Server 2008 will not let you run a query to filter on a text field. For example, select all from table name where text field equals some text will not work. You can only run like queries against text fields in SQL Server. This means you cannot use text fields to store usernames or passwords. The best bet for regular text data is varchar. Next up are key columns. What are key columns and why do I need them? The primary key of a relational table uniquely identify each record in the table. This can be a single column or a combination of columns. In your application, primary key is required for those tables that need edit, delete, or view functionality, need to work with images, or provide functionality like print or export selected records. The best option is to use auto increment field as a primary key. Your database will take care of generating the proper key value every time you add a new record. In Microsoft Access, such field type is auto number. In SQL Server, use integer identity field. In MySQL, use integer auto increment field. Next up, bad characters in table or field names. As a rule of thumb, only use alphanumeric characters naming your tables and fields. The first character in the name must be a letter. Avoid spaces, dashes, hyphens, slashes, etc. This makes things much easier from a programming point of view. 
If you need to make a field more readable, use underscores or camel case. Here is an example of a naming convention that should be avoided. Whatever naming convention you choose, make sure you use it throughout the whole project. Here are some database specific tips. Oracle. Recommendation is to create a table and field names in uppercase. Use underscores to separate words. MySQL Table names lowercase only. This will save you some headache while moving databases from Windows to Linux and vice versa. Field names can be mixed case. SQL Server the recommended way is to use camel case while naming tables and fields. Make sure to check your database guide for more in-depth information. Aliases in SQL queries. Aliases are used to give the database table or a column in a table a temporary name. The main idea is to make SQL statements more readable and also to avoid ambiguity. Some users make a mistake using aliases to rename field names. Here is an example of such a query. This approach is incorrect. First, you will lose all field project settings if you decide to change the aliases. Second, you won't be able to build multi-language applications. If you need to assign the field labels, proceed to Label Editor on the miscellaneous screen. Here, you can safely rename the field to a more descriptive label. So when do you need aliases in SQL Query, I hear you ask? First, when you use calculated fields in your query. Secondly, when you need to use the same field more than once in SQL query. And when you join another table that has a field with the same name. Last but not least, there are some additional tips that only apply to applications built with PHP Runner, ASP Runner Pro, or ASPRunner.net. Key columns must appear in SQL Query. Do not use aliases for key columns. Use long text fields like Memo in Microsoft Access or Medium Blob in MySQL to store image or file information. Each uploaded file info requires about 300 to 400 characters to store all the info. When you use encryption, make sure that the field provides enough space to save the encrypted file. Encrypted value can be two to three times longer than the original one. You also need to remember that only text fields can be encrypted. You cannot encrypt dates or numeric fields.
Okay, so that wraps up best practices with an SQL query. Following these simple guidelines will contribute and assist you while creating state-of-the-art web applications. Thank you very much for watching. Please share, like and subscribe. Till next time.